Hello everyone. Welcome today. So my name is Courtney with Canvas and today for Heart Scrabble Day we are going to be painting this beautiful simple sunflower. All levels so no experience required if you have never painted before. And um, yeah, we're just gonna get started and feel free to follow along if you have questions, maybe just put them in the comments or feel free to reach out to me through email at canvashv at gmail.com. So we are gonna get started. Bear with me, my first time going live. All right, so today for our sunflower painting, can you guys hear me okay, by the way? Wonderful. So I am gonna be working on an eight by eight canvas, which is pretty small, but you can use any size if you didn't happen to have that on hand. And the paints that I am gonna be using today are acrylic paints, but again, you can switch it up with watercolor, tempera. I'm using brown, yellow, white, and black. So the paint brushes that I'm gonna be using, I have a flat head and a round tip. They're both pretty small. Again, if you only have one brush, I'll, I'll be showing you ways that you can kind of use one brush to achieve many different effects. So again, the painting that we're doing today, it is a sunflower painting. One of the things that I really love about painting sunflowers or really anything in nature is that things in nature, there's no perfect or right way that it has to be. So no two flowers are exactly alike. So this really allows flexibility to paint a flower, make it your own and not worry so much about perfection or having it look a specific way. So to get started with my painting today, I'm gonna to start by just dipping, I'm gonna start with my flat head brush and I'm gonna dip it in my water and then before I dip it in my paint, I'm just going to dry off my paintbrush. And this just really helps wake the paintbrush up a little bit. And when I dip it in my paint, it's going to help move the paint around the canvas much nicer. So I am not really a mathematical or a technical person, so I speak a lot visually. Um, if we were going to look at this canvas and measure out sections, we're going to imagine four sections on this canvas if you were to split it up. And in the bottom left section, if I were to create boxes, that's where I'm going to choose to put the center, the circle of my sunflower. So depending on your taste, maybe you want to have your sunflower in the middle, maybe you're going to want it off much further to the side, that's all preference. But for me, just to keep it the same as the painting that I showed for the example, I'm going to just stick with what I already showed. So I'm going to start by dipping my paintbrush into the brown paint. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create what's called an underpainting. So another term you might be familiar with is a sketch. And instead of using a pencil, I'm just gonna sketch out with my paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a circle in my corner. Now, for some reason, you are just not good at making circles and you really need assistance. Feel free to find something around in your home. It could be anything that has a circular shape and just trace that. No shame in tracing. We all use the tools around you, you know, anything you need to make your experience enjoyable, easy, and stress-free. So I created my circle here. And again, this is just really gonna be, we're gonna be building on this. So you don't have to worry so much about making it perfect. And again, like I said, things in nature are not perfect. So if you were to look at a flower, you know, it's okay if it's not a perfectly even circle, but what we wanna do is we at least wanna give the, you know, the feeling to someone that that is the shape of a circle. Once you have your circle shape in, the next thing that we are going to do is without cleaning our brush off, we're gonna add a little bit of yellow paint on this brush. Now we're not cleaning off the brown paint because we're actually gonna use this in our uh, petal making shading technique. So with the little, if you have a ton of brown on your brush, maybe you might want to wipe a little bit off, but I just have a little bit on. And with that, I'm going to scoop some yellow paint. As I scoop the yellow paint, just a little painting tip here. So you're going to get some tips with me and you're going to get some techniques. So a tip that I do 
is I like to pull my paint from the side as opposed to just dunking my brush in the middle, especially because I have brown on it already. So I don't want to dirty up my yellow paint if I don't have to do that. Now, here is where the first petal might make you feel a little nervous, but you kind of just have to dive in and do it. So I'm going to just start off on my right side because I know that my petal over here is going to, you're going to see the entire petal versus the petals that are down on this side. So I'm going to start and all I'm doing is, and you'll see yellow and brown paint's going to come off. I made a, a little squiggly line. I'm going to have to reload my paint on my brush. And at this point, I'm only going to dip in the yellow because there is still some brown paint on my brush. If there's no brown paint on your brush, don't worry about it because again, we're creating a little bit of our underpainting our sketch first. After I've made that one line, I'm then going to create the same thing going the opposite way. And there you go. We have our first petal. Now, again, it might not be totally symmetrical on each side. That's okay. This is nature. It's a petal. It does not have to be perfect. Once you get your first petal in, you're then going to continue this, the same design, going around your center circle. Some of your petals may come off the canvas a little bit. Some may hit the side. What's nice about creating this little underpainting first is that you can always go back and redo. So nothing in canvas is set in canvas. You can always erase, or not really erase, but you can always paint over and redo. Now, as I go along the circle, you're gonna see that I'm kind of hitting the bottom of my canvas and that's okay. I'm gonna kind of right now give the illusion to someone that I have plopped down a sunflower and we're just viewing it from one angle. Now, the other thing I just wanna mention as I'm going around, because I am hitting the end of the canvas here, my petals, if I wanted to, because I'm using a gallery wrapped canvas. I don't know if anyone else is, but if you are using one, what that means is, is that the canvas actually wraps around the edges and you can paint on that. You don't have to, you can leave it blank. Or if you wanna continue your design down the edge, which I'm gonna to choose to do here, you just have to remember to paint all the edges as you go around, but I'm gonna have my petals go off the side. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until I have gone all the way around. As I start to get a little bit closer, I am just kind of gonna to look to see approximately how many more petals I can fit there. Just so as I'm painting, I don't get towards the, you know, too close to the last one and realize my last petal is gonna to be too teeny. So just painting your petals. These are just nice little curvy lines, wavy, bumpy. going around the sides and just remembering that if you paint petals and you hit the side of your canvas, so you just wanna wrap that around. Now, once you have your first layer of petals down, again, not cleaning my paintbrush, still gonna use the paint that I have on here, I'm going to be filling in the front layer of my petals. And how I'm going to do that is I'm gonna start by the part of the petal that is closest to the middle, I'm gonna be double loading, which means adding two colors onto my paintbrush. I'm gonna be adding a teeny bit of brown and a little bit more yellow. So if I were measuring, it would almost be two parts yellow to one part brown. Not exactly, maybe yours is gonna be a little different. And what I'm gonna do is using brush strokes, I am going to help give the impression that I've spent a lot of time shading my petals, making them look realistic, like sun is hitting it in some parts, maybe some parts are shaded in dark. And I'm gonna start at the bottom of my circle and I'm gonna just make some strokes going up. Notice I'm not going all the way up my petal. I'm taking that brush and I'm starting at the edge of my circle and I'm bringing those strokes going up in an up direction. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a little bit of a gradation throughout the petal. Some parts are gonna have dark spots. Some parts are gonna have light spots. Once you get the bottom half of the petal filled in, then with your paintbrush, you're gonna to wanna to make sure there's not a ton of brown on it at this point. So I might even just wipe my brush off a little bit, still leaving some brown on but I'm then gonna just take my yellow, knowing there's a little bit of brown on my brush, 
And now I'm going to start at the tip of my petal and do that same uh, brush stroke motion, but going down. So what that what's going to happen here is now it's going to be lighter at the top of my petal. And as you go down the petal, it's going to get a little bit darker. The reason being on this flower, the petals, if the, if the sun were shining down on the sunflower painting, the petals would be a little bit higher up closer to the sun. And as you like kind of look down into the flower, it's going to appear a little bit darker. So we're achieving that shadowing effect are really just giving some life to our sunflower petals by using our brush stroke technique and then also by adding different bits of color. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna repeat that now to all my flowers. So I'm dipping in a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown, sorry, a little bit of yellow. And again, starting at the bottom of my petal with nice smooth brush strokes. I'm paint, keeping my brush strokes in the same direction as the petals go. And then I'm gonna just dip the paintbrush in yellow. And again, with nice brush strokes, just nice straight, some a little curvy. As you get towards the edge of your petal, you're gonna to wanna to curve those brush strokes just a little bit. And each petal may look slightly different. And again, that's okay. If you want your sunflower to look completely symmetrical, that you can do that. Art is all about choosing what works for you what is appealing to your eye, what you like. And since you are the artist, you should be enjoying the process and hopefully loving what you create. So as I was speaking, I just, I repeated that process. I dipped it in some brown and yellow, started at the bottom of my petal, worked my way up about halfway. And then as I dipped it again in yellow, I'm coming back down. And as I come back down with those brush strokes, I'm not stopping exactly where I'm not stopping exactly where I had, uh, where the two colors meet. I'm kind of overlapping a little bit just to help blend those colors. And as you'll see, I am going back around because, you know, to me, I think that one petal might be a little too dark. Matter of preference, I can go back if I want to add some yellow. Being careful though, that with the brown paint, we just don't want to go over and blend too, too much because what can happen with that is you'll end up with a bit of a muted color and it won't look like different colors merging together. It'll more look like, you know, a flat blended color, probably very brown. So again, depending on your like or your taste, that's, it's all up to you what color, you know, where you want to stop blending, how much you want to blend, how much of a color you want to add. So as you'll see, I'm going around. And again, just following that same brush stroke technique. So what's gonna happen is depending if you're right-handed, left-handed, you may need to actually turn your canvas around a little bit if that helps, if that helps give you a better, you know, reaching of where you're painting. If it just helps give you a better angle, just being mindful that if you're turning your canvas around, some of the paint might still be wet and you might forget that, touch paint and then who knows what else you might touch. So just be very mindful of that. If you happen to get paint somewhere and you have baby wipes, quickly run and get the baby wipes and that should do the trick. But hopefully you won't need to do that. So again, I'm just going around. Each petal is gonna look a little different. And as I mentioned before, that's a good thing because it's just gonna help show, you know, a little bit of reality when it comes to your flower. So I'm just painting the edges right now. I'm gonna keep turning my canvas around. So if you're just tuning in or joining, my name is Courtney with Canvas and we are painting a sunflower today. Now, the other thing with this sunflower, once you really get this technique down and learn how to do this, you can apply this to any sort of color scheme or flower really that you're interested in painting. So I love teaching techniques and ways of painting things in a way that people can then take them and apply them 
to anything that they want to paint that is personal to them. So again, I'm just dipping my paintbrush in the brown a little bit and then in the yellow, trying to dip in the edges so I don't contaminate all of my paint. Today, it's not that big of a deal because I'm not going to need too much pure yellow again. But if you're doing a painting that requires, you know, clean colors, then you just want to be mindful of dipping your paintbrush. So if you have not finished and you're still working on your front petals, that's fine. I'm going to keep going though, and I'm going to now show you how to do the back layer of petals. So on our beautiful sunflower, which may or may not look like sunflowers you have seen before, we are going to add a little bit more depth to this sunflower by adding another layer of flowers in the back of petals. And what's going to happen is because the petals are in the back, they are going to be a little bit darker. So with the paint with the paint that I already have on my brush, I'm going to now go through and in between each front petal, I'm going to create a back petal. And how I'm going to do that is the same technique I used to make these petals, but you're only going to see half of it. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go around and I'm going to do this in between each petal. They can have different bends, different curves in them. Some can be thin, some can be wider. Really, as I said, it is all up to you. So once I have it sketched out where my back petals are gonna go, I am then gonna fill those petals in, except the way that I'm gonna fill them in is with a shade a little bit darker of the petals that I have in front. So this may take a little bit of playing around, maybe in your first dip, you'll be able to get it. But what I'm gonna do is just like I did before with the front petals, I dipped my paintbrush in that paint and I'm gonna start, this is gonna be a little tricky now because now you have to get in between areas, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna achieve that. And you're gonna to wanna to paint the bottom of the petal that you can't see and start to come up towards the tip of it. Now, instead of painting with my paintbrush flat this way, to get these little curves on the side, I'm gonna turn my paintbrush so I'm painting with the thin flat side of the brush. And if your brush is not flat, what you can do is with your paintbrush, once it's dipped in paint, take it and kind of press it on your palette that you're using. And that should help flatten out your brush a bit more. And then I'm gonna go in and make my lines. I'm gonna add a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow, and I'm gonna work my way up the petal. Again, keeping my brush strokes in the same direction as the petal. So that way, if light were to hit my flower, it would hit it along all of the edges and curves that the flower or the petals actually create. So going through, I'm just gonna repeat this to all my back flowers. And then if I have to re-dip my paint, depending how dark or light it is, that's going to help you determine if you need to add more brown or more yellow. So looking at mine, maybe I would add a little bit more brown, but I think I'm actually just going to leave it because I kind of like it. So I'm just going to keep going around. And really what you're doing here is just making sure that where that petal in the back is in between the two front petals, making sure that you can just see that distinction of where the petals are all separate from one another. And this will help keep it looking like a big blob of flower. But again, like I said, you know, artist choice. And if that's the look you're going for, then that's what you should do. So again, I'm just gonna keep going around. So I have an area down at the bottom of my canvas where I really don't have room to create that petal design. So I'm kind of just gonna, with the darker paint, just fill in a little bit in that area. So that way when I'm looking at it, it looks like there's a petal back there, but I didn't actually have to paint the entire petal. So we're just gonna go around and I'm gonna finish doing the petals that are in the background. 
And then we are gonna get to the center of our sunflower using a very fun technique. We have our backgrounds and then it will be all done. So hopefully everyone is having a good time, enjoying themselves while they're painting, not too stressed out. Maybe you have music playing while you're painting. It's always nice to add something uplifting, something that gets you in a fun painting mood. Maybe sing along. So getting those back pedals. Now, after we finish our center, which I'm gonna get over to now, we will have the opportunity, we're gonna be going back and adding some highlights onto our leaves, onto our petals. So if it still does look a little muted to you right now, don't worry about that because we are gonna add on that. I'm not adding white just yet because I don't want it to blend too much with the colors that I have going on. So for the first time today, I am going to wash my paintbrush. I'm gonna put it in my water when I wash my paintbrush. Just a little tip too, instead of just swirling it around and mixing your water, I actually, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but I push my brush down on the bottom of my cup as I'm swirling it. And that just helps really release. So I, I kind of push it down like that on the bottom of my paint cup. And that just helps release any of the paint that might've gotten stuck up along the way. I'm gonna put that brush aside and we are going to get working now, or I'm gonna get working now on the center circle and either you're following along or you'll be able to rewatch this video and get caught up, pause the video as you need to. So what I'm gonna do here is for my center circle, if you've ever looked at a sunflower close up or from afar, it almost looks like the center has a lot of little dots in it. And all those little dots are actually really just part of the flower. And there are some different colors, there's different shades. And to create this beautiful look in the center, we're gonna use a technique called uh, stippling. That's how you say it, stippling. And little quick history, it was actually created back in the 1500s, I believe, when people, they um, used it as a way of etching into stone. And as painters have, you know, people started using paint, we use it now as a technique, as it's really just a way of making small marks, like either dots or little flicks. And these dots help create a gradation, uh, an appearance of something, and we're gonna do just that for our sunflower. So to get started with our sunflower, to stipple the center of it, I'm gonna be using my round tip brush right here. And again, just like I did before, just to kind of like wake it up a little bit, I'm gonna dip it in my water, dry off my paintbrush, and then I am going to do what I did before, which is called double loading. So I'm gonna add two colors onto my paintbrush. The two colors that I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some black and I'm gonna add some brown. After I have added those two colors, I'm just kind of gonna take my paintbrush and I'm just gonna swirl it a little bit on my palette just to kind of even out where all that paint landed on my brush. So as I go to stipple, I don't have any chunks on there or big uh, blobs. So all I'm gonna do is using my circle as a guideline, I'm gonna go around and I'm going to dot very quickly, doesn't have to be perfect, my outer edge. I'm, gonna use, I'm actually gonna use a little bit more black just so you can see it on camera. So I'm going around, dipping in black, brown, and all I'm doing is the edge. I'm probably going in filling in like maybe a third of the circle around, still leaving about two thirds opened. The next thing that I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna stipple, 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 however, apple, however you say it. Let's see, I'm going to dot now the circle in the center. So now it's almost gonna look like I have a dotted circle in the middle, a brown area, and then another dotted space around it. So that's what it's gonna look like. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to keep this paint on my brush and I am going to now triple load. So now I'm gonna have three colors on my brush 
and I'm going to dip it into my white. And now with that color, I'm going to go around and fill in between those two circles that I just did. So just dotting in there. And then you'll see, you might want to take your time with this and create more dots, fill in more areas. But you'll see now from far away, you've created this shading effect all just by different colors of dots. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do, because we are finishing up in just one minute, and I know there's other really fun events that you might want to join in on for Hard Scrabble Day. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to wash off my round tip brush real quick. And... I am going to go back into my white paint now and I'm just going to go around on the petals and I'm going to add a few highlights. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of just going to take this maybe around some of the edges. And at first it might not look like much. And I'm even going to do the little some of the little tips in the back. And then you'll see that as you add that, it's going to add a nice little highlight. And we are just about out of time, but the last thing with the sunflower painting, after you've gone and added a few highlights in some places, you can then go fill in your background. So I actually, my original painting, I filled it in with white in the background, but you want to make sure before you do your background, maybe just make sure that the tips of the petals are dry. But other than that, you can just fill in with whatever color you would like in the back. And of course, at the end of your painting, don't forget if you would like to sign it. Maybe you want to, if you have extra room and you aren't sure what to do with that space, you could always write in a few positive words, a quote, or you can just leave it as blank space. That's up to you. Um, but I think we're gonna wrap it up now. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this time painting our sunflower. And let me just switch over so you can see me. So I hope you have all had fun today painting our sunflower and hopefully you were able to understand the tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can check out my Facebook page, Canvas HV, and send me a message there. Or like I said in the beginning of the video, you can email me. And um, yeah, other than that, I wish you guys a great day. Keep creating and happy painting to you all. Have a great day.